me about print is that, um, you know, you look at this, uh, what, are, what are the problems here? The changing fonts. The fonts. <clears throat> How easy is it to read some of these fonts? It's difficult. Yeah, I mean, this is why um, people who study accessibility and usability, particularly on the web, get really fussy about fonts because some fonts, uh, some fonts do really well. I used to love different fonts, and I see every now and then you see people and they put things, you know, all different kinds of fonts and stuff. Basically, what you want, um, if you are projecting onto a screen, you want a sans serif font, which means without the little lines. This is a serif font. See how they have little lines on everything? That works well on a printed page. Sans serif fonts work well on the screen. And the rest of this uh, doesn't really belong anywhere. <laughs> uh, maybe greeting cards or something. So um, why, why do we still have? you know, the A's with the flag on top instead of mm -hmm. the way we teach kids to write them? Yeah, true. That's a good question. Um, actually, and even uh, there is, uh, there are some I think fonts that have There are it. some fonts that have that, but and actually in print, the A's are easier to, um, to perceive. With the? With that, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Because otherwise they can be confused with O's mm -hmm. and uh, other, other sure. two o'clock letters. That's what we call them in this, two o'clock letter. Anyway, um, so. So should we teach children to write from like that? Mm -mm. To be no, I don't think so. I mean, handwriting, we generally want them. Um, to follow the pattern. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, basically, you know, yeah, we want them to follow the pattern of good manuscript or cursive. Uh, <clears throat> and the size of the font when you're projecting or? Well, the size of the font, um, in my opinion, um, well, the size of the font, if you are doing a PowerPoint presentation, one of the things you'll notice on some PowerPoint presentations is that people want to put tons of text like this. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's partly yeah. there to show you how horrible it is. Um, essentially, when you're in a PowerPoint presentation or when you're projecting something, you don't want anything really smaller than a 24 font um, because it's just, you know, it's not bad if you're sitting in the front row, but think of a big lecture hall, you know, at the back, and uh, it's hard, it's harder, it's hard to see it, it's hard to read it. And, uh, and then, again, it, print is different, although when people, <laughs> When students send me papers in, you know, with a font size of eight and ten, um, I I say I send it back, you know, and actually a lot of a lot of teachers will specify, you know, that they want Times New Roman twelve point font or something like that, and that is uh, reasonable because otherwise you get papers you know, in Windex or something, and that's no, not reasonable. So, again, supporting strategic learning, you want to give examples of work that's good. So students need, modeling is an incredibly powerful teaching technique. Show them what you mean, have them watch you, or give them examples of well done work so they can see it and go over it with them so they know what's good about it, you know. And then scaffold the assignments so that it doesn't come, it doesn't seem like a, a just a, a, a morass of, uh, you know, an overwhelming mountain to climb. And here's an example. Here's, um, here's an assignment again from a class in um, child development. And, you know, here are the goals. The product, you know, poster board, PowerPoint, task one, guiding quest, task two, really broken down so that students.
students are real clear, very clear what's expected. Okay. Um, and, and then give frequent feedback. This is, this is uh, students need feedback, helpful, corrective feedback. Um, I just want to show you an example from a usability test of a website on math. Um, this is a video. Uh, okay. All right, fine. Can you now have the video, please? Oh, here we go. Okay, good. Okay. When 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 users are on a website or anywhere, they are some, they expect feedback. Here's the yes. kid. It's doing it. He's looking at map. On the guess and check. Mm -hmm. You can actually do the natural and check your answers. Mm -hmm. What good is it if you can't check his work? So he spends almost twice as long trying to, to trying to get the answers. like that all over the web. I mean, what, what does that teach? Students need feedback and um, and that needs to be, so, you know, they need some access to feedback, um, they need it in a timely way, and it's true of everybody. Because otherwise too much time elapses, and what does that do for recognition or strategic networks or affective networks? It just raises anxiety actually. And then giving alternative ways to assess learning. So here, um, here again from, uh, from uh, uh, you know, here this student has arguably almost too many choices for their final project, Word document, brochure, narrated PowerPoint or slideshow, portfolio, poster board, outline, you know, um, outline accompanying a digitally recorded voice narration, visual handouts, other, and other ideas, consult with me. So, in other words, um, giving students choices empowers them and it also adds interest so that they can choose to do something. Now, you have to be careful that you're not, that they're not wildly different, they, they, that the same objectives are met with every assignment, but giving students a choice, uh, you know, again, can be a really powerful motivator and really helpful <coughs> for active engagement. Um, now, <clears throat> in terms of making learning accessible. So you can, you want to teach what we call the hidden curriculum. 
such as uh, time management, note take study skills, good study skills, giving them strategies that will help them access learning, using graphic organizers. Again, here's it's just a very simple graphic organizer for cause and effect. You can do this with compare and contrast. But, you know, it, this gives, shows relationships be, between concept. You can do this.